I just want to give you a little warning about this video you're about to see. On the day I had um, a sore throat, a bit of a cold, so it's a very relaxed video. It's not my normal cheery self. It will be even duller than my other dull videos, but it, it's got beautiful countryside of Portugal in it. It's not too long and it's got some very interesting information about the Model 3, so I still think it's worth a watch. Hello, this is Marcus here from EV Journey and I'm going to do a trip in my Tesla Model 3 from 2023, which is the rear wheel, which is the rear wheel drive version, which I haven't done before. So as we know, this car is absolutely amazing on the motorway at motorway speed. But today I'm going to do a long trip on national roads. The maximum speed limit is only 90 kilometers an hour. Now I have done this trip before in my Volkswagen ID3 and I'll put that video somewhere here or here. Anyway, where are we? We're in Altora in the Algarve here. And we're going to go up to Myrtle here, beautiful natural park. We're going to go up to Castro Verde and then we're going to go up this national road here all the way to my house just south of Lisbon. Now, it's 21 degrees Celsius outside today. It's a bit cloudy, a little bit windy. It's good conditions. I've got the car set to 20.5, the air conditioning. We're at exactly 87%. I've reset the trip. So let's go. So I'm going to explain a little bit about the trip. So basically it's all national roads. The first part, the first few kilometers is motorway. And we'll be going on to that in a minute. Now this is absolutely the efficiency king. So I'm really wondering what the efficiency is going to be like in this car. Percentage of battery is 87%. And I charged the battery at the supercharger in low light at Mars Shopping. I just paid 21 cents per kilowatt hour. Can you believe that? Extremely cheap, 21 cents per kilowatt hour. Now I should have enough to get all the way home. Hopefully I do. How many kilometers is it away? Apparently it's 272 kilometers away. It should take us three hours and 34 minutes. I might stop a little bit on the way, I don't know. It's not really important time on this trip, is to know what the efficiency is of this car because we don't have to stop to charge it. Um, it's gonna be the same as a petrol car. White car in front of us is called a Tivoli. It's an electric car. I guess it must be a Chinese electric car because I've never heard of this um, car before. If you know about it, let me know in the comments below, please. So another good point of going on this route is I'm avoiding the motorway and the Portuguese tolls. So I'm going to save myself around 25 euros by going on this route. Now, normally it'd probably take about two hours, 30 minutes going on the motorway. This is probably going to add an extra hour. I'm saving 25 euros and it's Sunday afternoon. So I'm going to have a lazy, leisurely drive. Now I'm going to keep to the speed limit. Um, in some places it's 50 and others it's 70 and in most roads it's 90. We're just going on to the motorway now. Um, like I said, there's only like five or 10 kilometers of motorway. This part of motorway we don't pay. So um, that's a good thing. And then the rest of the road is basically um, the country lanes, national roads, the whole way. We're overtaking the electric car. So just to let you know, we've just got onto the motorway. It's only about five or 10 kilometers of motorway. Uh, I'm gonna try to keep it 90 kilometers an hour, the speed limit, we're going to national roads, but in some places we go through villages, it's gonna be 50 kilometers an hour or 70 or 60. I'm just gonna keep to the speed limit. Now, the, but coming on the motorway, we're doing 120. I'm gonna keep it on chill mode, but I'm not gonna drive in any eco mode or eco way. I'm just gonna drive it like you would a petrol car or normal car. So motorway now is just ending and we've done um, eight kilometers since the start um, and we're going to pull off here at Castro Marin I think and in the distance over there you can see Spain the very eastern edge of the Algarve so in the distance there there's Spain um, but we're not going to Spain today no uh, we're gonna go home and there I don't know if you can see there in the distance there's the bridge that links Portugal to Spain, going over the river Guadiana. But we just turn off here. Um, and yeah, it's looking a bit dry here, isn't it? <laughs> um, and we're in May, if you want to know. But um, I think the weather's good for electric car. Shouldn't be pushing the air conditioning too much. It was hotter 
pushing it a bit more, but anyway, currently we're at 152 watt hours per kilometer, which is quite low, but we have just done a bit of motorway. And now this is the start of the national road. As you can see, the first part here is quite mountainous, but it's a nice area to drive to. The road's really good. There's no cars or traffic or anything. Look at that. Um, yeah, so it's saying we're going to get home with 19% of the battery. So we'll see how true that is. Now we have to slow down here to 70, um, as suggested, and that's what we're doing. Uh, putting lots of juice back into the battery. And yeah, this is a nice route. Makes a change from the motorway. Now, if you are coming to Portugal and you're in the east of the Algarve, going to Mertola may be a good day trip for you. So in a bit, I'll show you Mertola when we get there. And I think it's be probably about, I don't know, an hour from here, a bit less perhaps. But we've got these nice roads to drive there. So if you are coming to Portugal and you want to go inland, Mertola is a good place to go and get something to eat and to see the center of Portugal and a very nice medieval town with a castle. So can you see the reservoir over there? It's not looking good. It's looking quite low and that's bad because it's, we're still in the spring in May. So that may be bad for the summer. And now we're going over the dam wall. Oh, uh, hopefully we won't spot a dam buster in the sky. Um, but yeah, that reservoir looks really large. I think I've ever seen it so low. So that's bad. If you are coming to the Algarve on holiday, don't use too much water. And um, we've only done 24 kilometers. Uh, but our average is 153 watt hours per kilometer. I expect it to get a bit lower, to be honest, once we get out of this mountainous region. So this is such a beautiful route to drive because you see many birds and things on the way. I really can't see them, I think they may. Um, yeah, so I'm really enjoying it. It makes a big change from the motorway, doesn't it? And now we're going to get into a part where there's a lot of curves. We can try that. The model three. So let the curves begin. Great for motorcyclists as well, it seems. Rear wheel drive car for the win. Perhaps we need all wheel drive here. It's just rear wheel drive. Stick into the road like glue, it seems. In it, we have to cross a very dodgy bridge that apparently is limited to 20 tons. But I think this car is under two tons, so it should be okay. Should be okay. But is it a dodgy bridge yet? Uh, rickety bridge, where is it? Ah, yes, it's there. I don't know if you can see the bridge over there or not. It should be on the left-hand side. Um, it looks like it's got iron or something. I don't know. Limit ourselves to 50. Not that we're going much more than 50 anyway. We're in the Algarve here and we're about to go to Alentejo. Only one car at a time. 90 metres apart. So we can do these bridges. Please don't fall. Please don't fall. Please don't fall. And yes, we're across it, and there's a lot of water in the river. It does look really nice here. You can stop and have a picnic here. This is a nice place. And yeah, and this is a zone where there's many of these lynx cats. They try to preserve them in this area here. So we might see a lynx if we're lucky. So we're just coming up to a beautiful Myrtle now. Can you see the castle there? And this is really a great place to come and visit. You can visit the castle. Um, and it's got some really good restaurants in the town. It's also got some type 2 charging. So if you do, do need to charge, you can charge here. Um, currently, we're at 70% and we've done 69 kilometers. So 69 kilometers from out from Altor, this place. And, uh, and the scenery and the roads to get here, they're really nice. That seems they're repairing the road over there. And we're going to cross this bridge. Now, this bridge is made of stone. It seems a bit more solid. Then the last bridge, and this one can take up to 40 tons. So that's what we do. Cross this bridge here. And yes. See some water down there. I think you can hire a kayak and go kayaking on this river and stuff. So um, yeah, it's really a good place to visit. 
first I'll go through the main part of Myrtle. And I think the Type 2 chargers are just around here somewhere. I'll we'll have a look. They might have more chargers now. I didn't check. I should have checked really. And um, show all the chargers on the route because really now in Portugal there's chargers everywhere. Um, so anyway, Miss Street. They've got some chargers along the Miss Street Type 2. So have a Type 2 charge and go and have a slow lunch or dinner. Yeah. Your best to plan. So. In the real centre of town, you can walk from here to the centre of town. It's really beautiful, especially the cars and stuff. And you can go down to the river. So we're just pulling out of Myrtle now and we're going towards Castro Verde. This is still a bit hilly here, but not quite as much as before. And we're doing an excellent 132 watt hours per kilometre. So our consumption's going down. And we'll see what it is at the end. And it's saying we're going to get there with 21%. So we see if we can get there with 21%, shall we? I think we can. What do you think? So we're just turning onto this second road here towards Castro Verde. It's still a bit hilly, but not quite so bad. And I'm not quite sure how far Castro Verde is away. Uh, but anyway, uh, we've currently done 82 kilometers. And uh, yeah, it's going well. And the battery is at 66%, 66 for the win. And again, there's just no cars on this road, is there? It's just like a private road, more or less. And that's the way I like it. Lots and lots of straight roads to Castro Verde and no cars in sight. So we can more or less do the 90 kilometers an hour, which is great. Well, we're coming into Castro Verde now. Another great place with a few fast chargers, some slow chargers. We can eat in restaurants. Um, so we've done 113 kilometers, 139 watt hours per kilometer, quite good. Um, so I guess we go towards Alvistral next. I think it's Alvistral. I can't remember. I think so. I think so. Anyway, um, yeah, another nice little town, especially if you are hungry, I think. We're uh, getting less mountainous here, as you can see in the distance. Um, but we do have something bad, and it's saying that we've got a 12 kilometer headwind from the north. Um, so perhaps these figures would be a bit better if it wasn't for headwind. And that's saying the headwind has cost us 2.7% on the trip so far. I mean, it's nothing bad, but um, yeah, if it wasn't so windy today, as you can see, the, it is quite windy with the trees and stuff, um, we'd probably have slightly better consumption. But anyway, it's not really an issue, is it? I don't think so. So we're just pulling into Algestral. And I guess there's good restaurants here as well. Um, you can see the church up the hill there. Even a hotel. Wow, we could stay here if we wanted. Going up hill. Since we go around here, we go around here then. So this town's definitely got two type two chargers. Again, I didn't check. I don't know if it's got any fast chargers or anything. But sometimes these little towns in Portugal, they seem a little bit isolated. But in terms of charging network, most of them normally have at least type two chargers. So um, yeah, and so now we're just leaving Alzheimer's And I guess we're going over towards Mimosa, I guess. Um, and we keep going, as you can see, it's apart from the hill we had to get up into the town. It is quite flat now, so we're going to just continue. As you can see, oh, an ID3, woohoo! As you can see, there's very few cars on this road, so it's really great. Um, yeah, but all the roads have been like that so far. But the closer we get to Lisbon, it will get busier. But at the moment, it's just perfect. So it's quite a nice area. It's looking greener now. We're still continuing along this route. Um, and we're still continuing along this route. Next place we're going to is Santa Margarida do Sado. So I guess that's along the River Sado. And again, beautiful, straight, clear road. So now we're going to turn and go to Grandula, which is about 21 
kilometers away. And the scenery is quite nice along here. I'm enjoying it. Now we're in Santa Margaria do Sado. And we're going across another bridge, it looks like, doesn't it? That must be the River Sado below that. And it's a cafe shop. Oh, oh. The district of Setubo, yes, that's where my house is. This can't be too far now. We're actually 109 kilometers away. And there's the motorway there. Aha, to the right. So anyway, we're going to continue towards Grand Villa. Now, just to let you know, we've gone down to 130 watt hours per kilometer, which is pretty good. And we've done 168 kilometers, and we've used a massive 22 kilowatt hours. So, what's 22 kilowatt hours times 21 cents what we paid at the supercharger? You can work that out. It's not very expensive, is it? I don't think so. It's around four euros. It's four euros. Now we're just coming on to the main road between Albufeira and I'd say Setubal. And, if, and this road is quite good. Uh, instead of using the um, A2 motorway, a lot of people use this road. But um, yes, yeah, so we're getting on to this now because we've kind of crossed from the east, where this goes more down the west and in the middle. But as you can see, this road is going to have a lot more traffic on it, so stop, I can just stop, yeah, they keep going. But as you can see, this road's going to have a lot more traffic on it. And we're just 15 kilometers now from Grandola. And we could do 90 kilometers an hour. So we're just coming past Grandola now, and there's the Lidl over there. I used that Lidl a lot when I had the ID3, so there's a 50 kilowatt charger now there. I think there's some more chargers around here, but that was great when the charging network wasn't very good in Portugal and there's slow charge, there's a few more rapids in the town now, I think. So this is probably a good place to stop as well if you need to charge. So now we're going to Alcácer do Sal, that's 20 kilometers away. And we definitely don't need to charge because we've still got 47% of the battery. Didn't we start off with 87% or 88? So we've used 40% of the battery to do 192 kilometers. It's not bad, is it? I don't think so. We're just coming up to Alcasa do Sal, and we've got superchargers in Alcasa do Sal. We don't need to use them. Also, there's some other chargers, fast chargers, and slow chargers in Alcasa do Sal, because in Portugal, only Teslas can use the Tesla superchargers. So, where's the next stop now? Well, the next stop is going to be Marateca. It's not going to be a stop, but the next place can be Marateca, and then from there, I think we'll go on towards Montijo. But anyway, it's all going very well. And we've got 64 kilometers to go. So we're coming up to Marateca and Arnati are installing charger somewhere here. I'm not exactly sure where, is it in this sepsa? I don't know. Um, let's just have a look. Yes, yes, I see a building site over there. So here, we're going to get some RT chargers, which is great for the A2 for Lisbon. Because it's just off where we got on the A2 and we got on the A2 here. So that's going to be great when RT have got that installed. But we're not going on the motorway, are we? We're going to continue this way. We don't have far to go now. Another 34 kilometers. And we've done 243 kilometers. And we're at 128 watt hours per kilometer. So, um, yeah, the consumption's really good, isn't it? Um, and it seems that there's less wind now. It definitely seems like there's less wind, less wind. Anyway, we're going to go off and we're going to turn now towards Montijo. From here. So now going towards Montijo, we've got the Road of Trees. It's also a very nice place to um, drive. It can be a little bit dangerous, especially if you're on a bicycle. So we're just pulling into Montijo, nearly home to Moita now. We've got um, eight kilometers to go. Um, yeah, so it's going well. And we've done 270 kilometers. We're at 125 watt hours per kilometer. Mm. We're just coming into Moita now and uh, we'll stop and have a look 
I just want to see what the price of petrol is. Can I see what the price of petrol is? Let's see what the price of petrol is today. Yeah. Let me see. A quick look. So petrol is 154. It's getting cheaper, is it? All right. We'll just stop here and look at the stats. Look at that petrol is 154. So we've got 24%. And it's currently four minutes past eight o'clock. So that's taken, what's that? Three hours and 44 minutes. Unfortunately, this part of the video messed up, but we will do some stats now. I did this video before in a petrol car, an ID3. So pause this to look at the stats and I'll leave a link to the video. I did an impressive 12.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, or for the English people out there, that's five miles per kilowatt hour. And I only used 35 kilowatt hours. So if I was to go from zero to 100% of the battery, that would give us a range of 445 kilometers or 277 miles in old money. Now, because the supercharger was extremely cheap at 21 cents per kilowatt hour, including VAT and everything, that only came to seven euros and 35 cents. Now, if I was using a petrol car on today's current petrol prices, I think that would have cost 25 euros and 80 cents so a significant price saving as you can see now obviously the roads are at a constant speed and it's always impossible to do the same kind of speeds on this road because it's very up and down but this has been very realistic thank you again for watching i hope you enjoyed it i hope you click subscribe and bye